Hey folks, Technivers here. Today we are going to be printing some ABS on the TiVo Tarantula Pro. So I'll show you some of my tips and tricks in Kira, as well as get an actual print going and check out some of the possible outcomes. I know there are a few tweaks that you can do in order to get a better print off of an exposed air machine like this. And we'll jump right into it right now. All right, so I have my part that I've designed in Fusion 360 here. If you look a little closely, you might be able to discover a clue as to what it is, but we're not going to get into that too much now. I will let you know you'll figure that out in about a month. Uh, we're going to go over to Kira here. I've already imported my part, and I've actually already sliced it as well, but I have changed a couple of settings, so we're going to re-slice it. Right now, uh, we are going to check everything out. Basically, layer height, uh, quality shell, stuff like that, that's all going to remain the same. You can adjust that as you want, depending on your particular needs in the situation. Um, I'm going to leave most of that how it is. Uh, I am going to turn my infill up a little bit to about 20%. That should help a little bit with keeping the layers together. And my printing temperature is now at 235. This is decent for ABS. It's a good starting point. Build plate temperature of 60. Uh, that should do as well. You want to make sure that those are both set um, because if you're trying to extrude this at 205 or 220, you're going to break your extruder. Uh, the next thing is print speed, 60 millimeters second. Good starting point. Could turn that up, could turn it down depending on what I see from this first print here. So we're going to let it run at our, our PLA settings for a while. Different ABSs have different, uh, basically different components in them. Um, uh, consistencies of the actual chemicals in there so they have different hardnesses and they have different uh, well glassing temperatures even though they're relatively close to each other it's kind of why you want to find the sweet spot but uh, retraction is enabled we're gonna leave that this is another major setting you want to double check right here enable print cooling you want to make sure that this is turned off uh, and we are not gonna be using regular support we are gonna use tree support because it, it oh I also have a raft turned on uh, you don't need that. That's just a personal preference. We're going to use tree support, as I said down here, because it is going to create another draft shield, and we have draft shield enabled. So when we slice this, it's going to take a minute to process, but then you will see it will make the normal tree shield perimeter around it, and it will also put up a single thick perimeter wall around that that's just vertical, uh, and you can see that right here, and this is our draft shield. Here we go. So this is going to contain all the hot air and help us minimize uh, airflow across. So, And that's another nice thing about the tree support is as it's enveloping there, it's going to keep the hot air in this pocket here and kind of keep the warmth where we want it. So there isn't a giant temperature variance between the base of the model and the hot end. So that's basically our settings. We're going to go ahead and save this to a file here. We'll jump over to the TiVo. All right, so I got this fresh roll of ABS here. We're going to be using for a Kodak review, and I got to get it out, cut the 45, and load it onto the machine here. We'll do that right now. And so far, I've had pretty good luck with all the Kodak stuff. Um, as I said, we're printing ABS without an enclosure, so we're using that draft shield. I also am picking a machine that's back here in the corner for a reason should retain more heat and it is the furthest away from the vents that control the airflow in this room so in theory that should also help prevent cracking or warping or lifting away from the bed so we'll tell you this is my first attempt at abs on this machine so we'll see how it goes i have had really good luck with the ender 3 before and if this ends up being a fail because the temperature does go slightly lower than the Ender 3, then I think we will jump over to that machine and use it instead. But so far, so good. It seems to be hot enough to glass the filament and we are running. So let's start our print here. And I'll see what I can do about getting us a slightly better view from the camera.
should be sufficient for now. So far, everything seems to be going down smoothly. It's now moved on to the second layer of the raft. Uh, it will continue to put down all the raft before we start to see any of that draft shield or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward one more time and jump to the first couple layers of the draft shield here. All right, now that we've jumped ahead a little bit, you can see our draft shield quite well there. It pretty much encircles the perimeter of the whole model. If we get a little closer here, you can see the tree support being worked in around the model there. And you can also see the infill and the shell of the model itself. So everything seems to be going pretty well right now. We're gonna go ahead and let this print and we will come back and take a look at it when we take it off the build plate. Of course, I will tell you when it's done printing, we are gonna to wanna to let it cool down completely. So it kind of cools at an even temperature and sets up before we try to take it up off because if there's any warm spots in the middle, it'll be really brittle and easy to crack still. So um, I will see you in just a couple minutes and we will wrap this up. All right, so I have my model here and I have my clippers. We're gonna go ahead and remove this and see how well our ABS print came out. As I said, this is an open air print, so uh, a little bit more difficult to print than your standard ABS print. Just give it a little twist and it pulls right out. And it is not looking bad. There are a couple of details in the overhangs that I think could have done better with a different kind of support. But our model has come out in one piece and I think it is sandable and finishable. So that's not too shabby. Uh, you can see the bottom there is a little rough because it wasn't perfectly level in the slicer. So um, that'll be some quick cleanup, some sanding, and we'll clean up some of these other pieces and I will be right back to show you what the finished part looks like. But yeah, pretty accurate. This is more than acceptable. There are no major cracks, no warping, no lifting or anything like that and everything inside came apart nice and clean now as you can see this here was the barrier holding our heat inside the model and we have one more of these to print that actually goes on the other end of what i'm building so we'll start printing that now as well and i'm going to clean this guy up all right so we got our other model off the printer here and it is this guy right here as you can see i've done a little sanding to it as well but all of the detail has come out quite nicely. I've cleaned up these ridges a little bit. Let's take another look at this other guy here. After a little bit of sanding on the top, it is a lot flatter. It does require a little bit more sanding. But if you take a look, you can see that those overhangs cleaned up pretty nicely with a little file and some sandpaper. So uh, that is basically the gist of it. I wanted to show you this though, because if you take a look at this guy it is no longer round so as it cooled down you could see it started to buckle and warp here and that's what happens to really thin layers of ABS and that's one of the reasons that we use this draft shield because we don't want that to happen to our model um, and and this is okay to warp while it's cooling because it's holding more heat in there longer preventing damage to the actual object we're printing so uh, these came out pretty well I will tell you I kind of cheated a little bit this is a round bottomed object and they adhere a little bit better. If you have a corner, they tend to lift, but you can see this one, which printed on the bottom surface, has two really sharp corners here with uh, fine peninsula looking features, and they didn't lift up at all. So um, using the raft was a big part of that. If you're gonna get any warping or lifting, it's gonna happen down here on your raft. 
say in the corner here uh, and then the draft shield is forcing most of the raft to, to retain its shape which helps form a better model at the center of the raft well that's gonna be it for this one guys basically let's go over this one more time so you want to make sure that your temperature settings are set to whatever is listed either on the box or the spool and that's gonna most likely be somewhere between 230 and 250 uh, there are some that go outside of that range on both ends, but a true ABS will be somewhere right around 240, 245. You want to make sure that your bed temperature is turned up a little bit, somewhere around 60 or 65, just to kind of help keep that ambient heat down there. And if you can turn it up higher than that without causing problems, that is optimal because the more heat generated by the bed, the less variance you'll get in the middle of the model as heat tends to rise. You want to make sure that you have your draft shield turned on. You want to make sure you have some sort of adhesion turned on, which means you want to have, if not a raft, at least a brim holding down the corners of this model. Definitely recommend using a raft. You'll use a little bit more plastic, but you will end up wasting less plastic with failed models in the long run, and it ends up being a win-win. So uh, don't forget to turn the fan off, and if you want better surfaces, don't be afraid to also turn up the infill density just a little bit past what you're normally using in order to get a little bit better bridging across top surfaces with the ABS. So uh, I did find in sanding these down that I really enjoyed the workability of this particular ABS. It sanded really easily. I didn't have to grind on it or uh, apply a lot of force or anything. So it was really easy to clean these models up and I think they both came out really well, especially for my first go at ABS on the T-Pro. So, uh, it is definitely doable. I don't have a profile up yet. I think I will copy the one that I've made and we will get that posted at some point in the near future, but I do have a lot of things going on, so kind of in the middle of a few other projects at the moment. If this video was helpful for you, don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell to get notifications because we're always putting up new videos. Hopefully some of them are at least a little bit helpful like this one here, and we will see you in the next one, guys. As always, this channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. If you'd like to support the channel on Patreon, head over to www.patreon.com slash technivorous. That's going to be it for this video. As always, I am Technivorous, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out our main channel page where we do a free giveaway for our subscribers every month. So far, we've given away things like a Capricorn PTFE tubing kit and spools of filament. So the giveaway videos are always pinned to our main channel page. So all you have to do is subscribe and leave a comment on the giveaway video for the current contest. Feel free to check out this video right here. YouTube picked it from my content just for you. And if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button right here. So what are you waiting for? Become a Technivore now. Thanks again. Technivorous out.